All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of the Young Guides Podcast YouTube channel. On today's fly tying tutorial, we will be tying the lightning bug. Today's going to be in the gold color. This is a great all around mayfly imitation, caddis imitation, anything kind of small. Uh, works great in dirty water. It's just a great attractor pattern because of how bright it is. It's got the right shape, it's got the right profile. Today we're going to be tying this on a size 16. This is a U101. It's just a, I believe that's was the Umqua um, nymph hook. Just a regular straight sh nymph shank, and then um, a bead, brass bead, and copper. Uh, I don't want to do something super heavy like a tungsten because a lot of times this is going to be fished behind a another fly, like a bigger pat and a weight, maybe even behind two flies. This will be your third fly. So I don't want it dredging bottom, but I do want it to stay. Um, down towards the bottom, I just don't want it dredging. So I'm gonna go ahead and start making my thread base with some olive A dot unithread going towards the back end here. Cut off my excess, going right up to the start of the bend. From here, I'm gonna go ahead and take uh, some gold pheasant fibers. Normally, I would use just like a regular pheasant tail, but kind of been playing around with this gold pheasant lately and I really like just the coloring on the the tips of the feathers here I kind of like the kind of yellowish orange with a little bit of black in there I just like that color contrast it just I, I think it, it looks really good to me um I just have to see what the fish think so I took a few fibers just gonna twirl them in my hand you know that that was that's not a ton of fibers Looks like I got a couple of broken tips there. I'm gonna go ahead and just do a couple light wraps with that in there. Probably gonna cut off a couple more fibers just so I can make sure I have enough here to have a, a, a fairly solid tail. Cut off some more here. Oh yeah, that's good. I'm gonna go ahead and twist that in my fingers so that all those fibers are pointed different directions. I'm gonna go ahead and lay that on the back couple more light wraps now it's a little longer than I'd like it so I'm gonna grab both clumps pull them slightly forward I'm gonna take those two completely out of the picture there we go so now that's that's about the right length that I want it's corresponding to the length of, about, of the shank I'm gonna go ahead and wrap forward and I'm capturing all of those fibers under my thread so I don't get a weird clump towards the back end cutting off my excess Go ahead and wrap towards the back again. Now I don't want these to get pushed down too much because sometimes when they get waterlogged, catch a fish, they start pushing down. I'm gonna go ahead and take a couple wraps underneath the fibers, one in front, one in the back, pulling it tight. So now it doesn't wanna go down. It kinda wants to flare and shoot up a little bit more. And I really like that coloring. I like that kind of Black at the base, kind of an orangish yellow, and then that black again at the top. I really like that color contrast. And again, just have to see what the trout think. Build up my body. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to take some ultra wire. This is just some small and copper. And this is going to be our ribbing that goes over the body. And this is going to counter wrap the flash boo that I'm going to use because that flash boo can be pretty weak after a f even just one or two fish or just a day of fishing, that uh, flash boo can come undone and you're gonna have basically a useless fly. So this is gonna help the, the durability of this pattern. Go ahead and tie that copper in so it takes up the entire shank on that tag end because you don't want a weird clump. I'm gonna go ahead and take a piece of gold flash boo I'm gonna tie that in the same way, going out the back. Come on. Alrighty, going all the way to the base of the tail, wrapping back towards the bead again. I'm going to do a couple sets of whip finishes so I can keep everything together. I'm going to use the rotary vise and I'm going to go ahead and wrap this flash boo forward. Now, it doesn't have to be a perfect touching wrap, so you can try to as best you can. But as soon as I get to the base of that bead, I'm gonna go wrap all the way back again, just to make sure that I'm covering up any little gap in my flash boot, covering all of that thread. 
all the way to the base and then going all the way back up again create a nice thick even body now I'm getting back up to the base I'm gonna go excuse me, the base of the bead I'm gonna go part way back and then forward so I'm building up a little bit of a thorax there a little bit of a taper to the bead oh there goes the flashaboo I'm gonna go ahead and tie that down real quick before it comes unraveled too much stuff happens I put too much pressure on it luckily it didn't just blow up in my face which I'm surprised didn't happen capture that down and cut that so now I got my body on there now I wrapped away from me when I did my rotary function so now I'm going to use my copper wire and I'm going to make wide wraps towards me which is going to counter wrap that which is going to again add to the durability of this fly. I'm going to get back up to the base of the bead and do some wraps front and back, capture that wire down, helicopter it off. And you guys know how much I love my iStub Olive Brown, this Orvis stuff especially. Not only is it a good color combination with a little bit of flash and a little bit of, uh, say, bugginess. It's kind of got some little pieces of dubbing sticking out everywhere. But when you hit this stuff with a UV light, it really, really glows. So I'm going to go ahead and dub some onto my thread. And then I'm just going to build up a little collar or a little thorax behind it behind the bead. I'm going to leave it a little scraggly there because again it kind of looks like little legs, could be little gills. I'm going to go ahead do a couple whip finishes behind the bead. Like a couple sets of whip finishes versus head cement. Cut her off and you're good to go. That is your gold lightning bug. Tie this in a few different colors. Could tie it in green, could tie it in kind of a blue. Purple has been a really good color for me in the past. And again, it's going to capture that light really well, especially if the water's a little off color. You got a lot of mayflies in the system. You got some bugs that are emerging, kind of capturing that air bubble. Sometimes the shininess of this pattern can imitate that. A lot of caddis. It's a great summer, spring, early fall pattern to again run behind a couple of bigger nymphs uh, to help get it down. Appreciate you guys watching this episode of the Young Guides Podcast YouTube channel, another fly tying tutorial. If you guys like what you're seeing, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, like this video, and let us know what you want to see in the future. We appreciate you guys watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.